What's going on everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering and I'm waiting for my PewDiePie video to be approved. Hopefully that will happen and that will already be up by the time you're seeing this. If it hasn't been, then you're seeing this first and hopefully you'll see that one at four. Now, some new DMs uh, in regards to ZQ have been leaked and the team over at the Post Millennial uh, has been doing an amazing job covering this whole situation. And just when I think, just when I think that, you know, it's kind of over, bam, new evidence drops. And this whole gaming world, uh, the whole gaming world should be watching this and should be taking note. If you're watching this video, even passively, you know, leaving a like, leaving a comment and taking a second to share on social media, I think does strongly help getting the word out there, help counteract the overwhelming narrative. Of course, we are but a small group, but we can reach a lot of people if everyone works together to, to share this type of information out there. So people um, know that there's always more to the story, that there's always two sides of every story. And we know this from just about every single situation that's happened in the video game community over the past few years. And now we are learning even more. Now, uh, the team over at Post Millennial, which includes Anna Slats, who I improperly did not credit for the last article, and now Diana Davison um, have worked together on this article. And a lot of this mirrors what a fellow developer, coworker of um, ZQ has told me as well in private. I can't say specifically what they've said because they're afraid that it's too, like people put it together who they are. And we've seen that the indie video game development community is extremely tight knit, extremely ferocious, that will hold a grudge and will cancel people any chance they get. Now, new DMs have leaked out uh, in regards to Zoe. They are actually from Alex, which is a Feels a little weird reading them now, given his, you know, he's passed. But I think it's important that, uh, from you know, from a context perspective, that we see exactly the type of person uh, we're dealing with here. And I think it continues to shed even more light on uh, who he was and what really happened. And if you missed anything, there'll be a playlist in the description that will cover all of this. I've got about five or six videos covering this whole situation as it develops, or make sure you check out thepostmillennial.com. Now, on August 31st, 2019, video game developer Alec Hawaka self-checked out um, following uh, stories from ZQ. His subsequent removal from the Night in the Woods development team and unpersoning in the video game community to add a little bit more to that. I do suggest you just read this whole uh, article, which I'll also link. Utilizing resurfaced tweets and audio, the Post Millennial released a comprehensive rebuttal of her statement detailing that she alleged um, things that she had to deal with while living with him in 2012. The article released September 8th, which I covered before, uh, and you should read too, um, outlined a number of discrepancies and outright fabrications present in her statement on the 28th. Likely as a result, the post-millennial post was subjected to DDoS attack when it attempted to, which attempted to shut down access to our site. As far as I've also been told, I've been told that this also happened to Kiwi Farms. I'm not exactly sure, but it seems like somebody is absolutely working towards trying to silence this story. And it makes me wonder who that might actually be. Since the publication of this article, or I'm sorry, from the article, more information has surfaced to contradict the statement many speculate to that led Halaka to make his decision. Speaking with the Post Millennial anonymously, I wonder if this is the same person that I was speaking to, to be honest with you. Due to fears of backlash, a fellow developer of his uh, had provided dozens of messages exchanged in 2014 with him speaking about his experiences with ZQ. The authenticity of these messages have been verified. He had reached out to express fear about telling his story, saying, I've been trying to talk to friends about it for a couple of years, he wrote. Thought about sharing my story with her a few times, but was always scared. 
here's his comments on the left and then the source on the right. It's been interesting. I've been trying to talk to friends about it for a couple of years. If a friend says, if talking about her doing this, wait, if talking about her doing this, being terrible ruins my career, I don't want a career in this industry. Yikes. Yeah, I'm really confused by the people who are angry about this being shared. Wonder what dude thought before sharing it. I, I thought about sharing my story with her a few times, but was always scared to. Uh, goes on to say, I think he was completely emotionally wrecked and angry. I think they're talking about the ex, the 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 um, the Zoe post is what they're talking about. I think, um, I think it was completely emotionally wrecked and angry, but it doesn't change what she did. IMO, your story will give credence to his, but it's a risky move, so I totally understand. Alex says, so there's so much backlash if you go into that area. Yeah, I mean, long before he posted this in the chat. He also has said he is wary of making her angry and often had to look for solutions that wouldn't upset his former partner. The friend says she said she got into social justice for revenge, which is a weird is weird to me. He goes on to say another time we went out to this Yuri's night thing. She just got really hammered and was hitting on all kinds of people. It was super new to me, like people I was in a relationship with being super flirty with other people i was trying not to be judgmental she kept going to the bathroom and saying there was a girl in there trying to pick her up and after three to four times i was like you want to just go um because if you really want to go for it uh and did this whole thing this whole no i want to be with you blah 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 and then kept going back to the bathroom later she had a huge breakdown about how everyone hits on her and it's so unfair and evil <laughs> What? This sounds like a crazy person. Oh, woe is me. Oh, gosh. I mean, I definitely can relate. It's really tiring just being so incredibly attractive. But I just don't see how this is anything but emotional manipulation. Uh, he goes on to say, and I really want to say, like, maybe don't be as flirty then. But then I knew... That would be something she would freak out over. So instead, I said, maybe there's something we can do together to avoid these situations. And she freaked out on me anyway. Got really angry. Said I was discounting her personal experience. <laughs> How can you date somebody this crazy? In no way was I doing that. I was quite open to listening and trying to understand her personal experience. The person goes on. God, like... There are genuine instances of, quote, victim blaming. Telling someone don't put out signals if you don't want to get hit on isn't one. I mean, right. I mean, I think, you know, continuing to meet somebody in the bathroom for some sweet makeout sesh is probably sending some signals, I would imagine. It's probably, you know, uh, leading somebody on. Uh, and then to say that you are, of course, suffering under this is, of course, ridiculous. In direct contrast to her statement, he paints a very different picture of their time together in Winnipeg, suggesting that despite problems present in the relationship, he had been so infatuated with her, he had offered to pay for the couple's counseling to keep their relationship healthy. He goes on to say, so when we first started being a thing, she came to Winnipeg, was living there at the time, uh, going on, then the person said, she's always in a bad situation. Something bad always happened, etc." Boy, it's uh, five years later and nothing changed, has it? Like, literally nothing changed. Uh, <clears throat> he goes on. Right off the bat, I was like, so in love with her and so happy the relationship that I suggested we go to couples counseling. What? Why would you suggest that if things were okay? Anyway, <clears throat> as like, a, hey, this is really great. Let's keep it that way by having a neutral third party to go talk about stuff. And I offered to pay for it and whatever because I knew she was broke. And her response was, well, if you think you need that. And I was like, no, that would be for both of us to talk about whatever is going on. Well, if you think you need that. Uh, he also expressed that he felt those viewing what would have been. I'm sorry. He also expressed that he felt those viewing what would have been the GG issue as a issue of simple um, of simple bad ideas were mistaken. Having firsthand experience with Q. That contradicted a very public narrative. But this is about a clear case, as I know, as I know people aren't really looking at that detail because I was there. In a very similar, similar situation, it's like, yeah, she got serious issues, 
but she should be working on them if she wants respect. Like, if you don't own your own problems, it's not easy to own your own problems, but that would be an amazing step she could take. The developer goes on to say, thing is, no matter where she goes, bad things follow her. She is always the victim, never the perpetrator, and that's suspicious at best. Uh, Alex, goes on, Alex goes on to say, yeah, so far I've only seen her run into other messed up situations. However, Alex's expressions of dissatisfaction with his past relationships predate Q's 2014 issues, eliminating the possibility that the conversation stemmed from the bitterness towards her public stance or need to be sneakily cover his own past. In simpler terms, Alex has no motive to mischaracterize a relationship he had with Q. His claims in 2013 are consistent with these newly uncovered claims. If you go back to 2013, here is him referring to her as a pathological liar. And also, I got I got game over I got game over pretty early, but for when I hear the game gets even worse if you keep playing. <laughs> Mostly telling Alex is continuously apologetic towards the feminist cause at multiple points, pointing himself out as a feminist decrying bad behavior and lamenting the way the 2014 controversy was polarized by ideological interest groups. Quote, It's sick that MRA types latch onto the stuff and use it for more bad behavior. It's being perceived by feminists by one way and MRA people I don't like another way. I already get accused of being a, quote, secret feminist when I'm like, no, wait, that's a bit too far there, bros. That's the other person. Alex goes on, like both parties are just talking about what they need to validate their positions. I hate, and we will probably agree on all this. I don't know. It's clearly not because she's a woman. It's because she's a bad person. Woo! That's a spicy a meatball. Uh, it would see, and that is in response to this other developer saying, I think people like Zoe are unfortunately going to create more problems. Women are going to be seen as liabilities more and more. He goes on to say, I don't know. It's clearly not because she's a woman. It's because she's a bad person. This is in 2014. These messages corroborate Quinn's own assertion that Alex was concerned about the challenges facing women in the gaming industry. And it was his primary motivation for interacting with her prior to their connecting through Twitter direct messages in 2012. As stated in our September 18th exclusive, the new evidence is not completely exculpatory. It does not provide a complete picture of what happened between the two during their time living together in 2012. It does, however, continue to call into question the credibility of the statements made by her against him. And importantly, it demonstrates the tragic logic of guilty before proven innocent. Then Beholst Millennial reached out to ZQ and was unable to contact her for comment at this time. Well, yeah, of course. Uh, as far as I know, there's been a, a full retreat into, um, I don't know, uh, a hug box. It's hard to say. I think each individual piece <coughs> that we see adds more to the picture of not just the video game community in 2014, but where the gaming community is now. In particular, the indie video game community also seems to have many, many deep-rooted problems that they project out on to gamers. If nothing more, each individual piece of evidence that keeps coming out between what people around her are telling me and what the post millennial is putting out publicly, there is more than reasonable doubt in the statements made about the game developer Alex. And I'm hoping that rather than continue to focus on this one bad person who's been a bad person their entire life, we can focus on the culture around it and not interact with this person anymore, but use them as an example of reason to have questions, reason to look into things and not simply blindly trust somebody because of what gender they are. And especially in the video game community where this type of behavior seems to be glorified, um, celebrated, encouraged even because in all forms, these retweets, you know, follows, blue check marks on Twitter, these are all weird forms of encouragement. These are all weird forms of support, forms of um, uh, positive reinforcement. And I want all of that to go away. And I want this case to stand the test of time. 
as another perfect example of when people jumped to conclusions. Now, if what was said about indie game developer Alex was true, most of that doesn't even seem that bad. And most of it, of course, is completely unsubstantiated. And I'm hoping that people will finally wake up to this whole believe me first and fill in the blanks later mentality that the video game community seems to be fostering and start asking the tough questions, start asking people to prove the things that they say. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you're enjoying the series. Check out any video that you've missed in the playlist and we'll talk to you again real soon. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, before you leave, make sure you leave a like and drop a comment on it. It's the only way to help the channel grow in today's YouTube environment. Above, you'll find a link to subscribe and make sure you turn your notifications on. Or if you just want to check out another video, there's one of those up there too.